My favorite place to blow stuff up. Mine too. Let's get set up. Now, to test this myth about explosive cancellation, we could have just gone to the bomb range and set off two blasts without much fuss. But instead, we've come back to Ione, and that's because we want to do the test above water. Why? Well, this myth is all about shock waves. And we found in an earlier experiment One. that explosions wow. above water give you a great visual image of the shock wave. Not only is the shock wave itself more visible in the air, but it also leaves a really clear pattern in the water. Not only should the lake showcase the shock wave, it's also good for picturing the two boom plan. Now, soon enough in this episode, you are going to get to see some absolutely gorgeous high-speed shots of the blast pressure waves from an explosion moving outwards across this beautiful lake. But until then, let me use these stones to tell you what we're going to see. The first explosion will be a single five-pound blast, and we'll get to see the blast pressure wave move out from that like this. See those ripples moving outwards from where I dropped the pebble? That equates to our blast pressure wave, and our pressure transducers will be reading the intensity of that pressure front as it moves away from the epicenter of the explosion. Once we have that data in hand, it will be time to do two simultaneous explosions symbolized by these two rocks. Now watch as their ripples move towards each other and then collide. It's that collision of the two blast pressure waves that we are going to be looking at the data. If this myth is true, we should see a significant drop in the intensity of those pressure fronts when they meet. Well, to find out, Jamie's replacing the rocks with something altogether more dangerous. So these are our explosives. That's five pounds of TNT. And these are our floating platforms with a hole right in the middle. There'll be a rod comes up three feet. That sits on top of it. Bob's your uncle. Meanwhile, Adam's building the data collection device. Awesome. Upon which the whole experiment depends. So first up, I'm making an eight foot by one foot platform that will float on the surface of the lake. Then I'm gonna drill seven holes at one foot intervals across the length of the platform. <sighs> Another good use for a cowboy hat. Into each of those holes, I am putting a six-foot length of Schedule 40 pipe. Awesome. At the very top of each piece of pipe, we'll sit pressure transducers, which will measure the exact last pressure of our explosions. One down. Attached to each of the transducers is a wire that will emerge from the pipes, carrying some lovely pieces of data for us to analyze. So, the rig is certainly complex. Oh! I think we're fine but its job is surprisingly simple. Once in position on the water, the guys will set off a single blast. The rig's seven PCB transducers will then record baseline pressure readings as the blast wave passes by. Next comes blast two, an identical double explosion, where the rig will help reveal if the pressure readings where the two waves meet goes up, down, or sees no change at all. We're on the move. And with the assembly at last ready to roll... Cool. ...the guys must next position it in the lake for the single blast control. A procedure that's a very delicate operation. Well, that was interesting. Jamie and I are out setting up for the first experiment when all of a sudden the wind picks up... Oh, for f We actually turned out to have gotten caught in a little tiny tornado. You all right? Yeah. That was... Whoa! Felt like being smacked with a ton of bricks. And all of a sudden, I knew my hat was almost blowing off. Jamie's hat was blowing off. I've never seen that happen here since we... All the time we've been coming here. Yeah. That was weird. It's not what such a delicate operation needed, but it's not long before the rig is in place. It'll float. Cool. Next, it's joined by the control's explosive five pounds of TNT positioned three feet above the water and five feet from the end of the rig. Awesome.